Lori Hara. I'm back. So I did wind up going to a wedding this weekend and I also was able to go to a few days of New York City Comic Con and I'm back. It is set. It's Monday. It is Columbus Day, which I lucked out <laughs> with the timing of having a day off after Comic Con because I'm normally shot and exhausted. So it actually worked out sort of nicely. But um, so yeah, I am really trying to get into a creepy read. I've been reading some non-creepy books, so I met up with a friend at Comic-Con, and she gave me a book, All the, all These Bodies by Kendra Blake, which is a murder mystery set in, I think it's set in, like, 1958, so it's really, like, compelling. It's a male lead character, which I don't normally read from a lot, I would say, 80% of the books I read have female lead characters, but I really like this book quite a bit. My goal is to finish a majority of this book today. I'm also listening to The Wife Upstairs by Rachel Hawkins, which is a group read for my book club that I'm a part of on the TBR and Beyond reading group. So I think I'm going to do is I am going to go for a walk just to sort of like stretch my legs um, and try to make some more listening progress on that audiobook. Um, then I'm going to come home and I'm going to hopefully maybe even finish all these bodies. But yeah, so it was it was a very, very nice weekend. It was I think I said this in my book call whenever that goes live. It definitely was different from any other con I've ever been to because I normally go to cons that are very, very book focused. And this all the publishers do the pandemic decided to sit this one out. So there was some authors. I got to meet a couple. I got to meet Mary Lou. Again, I got to re meet Christina Lauren, um, which is two authors. I got to meet um, a couple of other authors, um, a couple of other authors, like smaller authors, like indie published, which I think I'm going to do a reading blog in 2022, like focusing on indie published authors, just because I bought a lot. I also bought a lot, I mean, a few, I bought a few graphic novels, but that will be in that reading blog when I post it. And also all the art and prints and stuff that I bought. This was definitely the year for prints because I bought a ridiculous amount of prints. Um, but yeah, I'm going to go go for a walk hopefully the rain it won't rain on me um and when I come back I'll check in with you about the wipe upstairs because I actually didn't listen to it at all, at all this weekend um I listened to a little bit of Percy Jackson so when I come back from my walk I will update you guys bye friends I'm back it is almost 11 o'clock I went up going for a pretty long walk and I listened to I would say about an hour of the wipe upstairs I sometimes struggle with adult thrillers because all the characters are super unlikable and I like don't like anybody in this book except for one person who we don't even see a lot but it's very interesting it's definitely like a Jane Eyre inspired story I would say um it's engaging it's fast paced I don't like any of the characters but I'm intrigued to see how the story like wound up I don't want to say too much because I feel like anything I say will probably be spoiling it but I am going to go back and read a little bit more of All These Bodies by Kendra Blake, and I will give you guys an update. But so far, I'm really liking it. I read this most of the day yesterday as I was sort of running around the convention center. But I really am liking it. And when I read to about 1.50, I'll give you guys another update because I haven't read this since yesterday because I was cleaning my room when I got home. So I'll talk to you guys when I have re read a little bit more. Bye, friends. I'm going to do a quick update. I literally wound up reading to page 150 in All These Bodies by Ken Dare Blake. I really am liking this book quite a bit. It's been so long since I've met a, read a book that's had a, only a main character that's a guy, and I really tend to like that. The lame me on being from the Harry Potter generation or the Percy Jackson generation. I like stories like that, and actually they're sort of unique because a lot of books I read tend to have female main characters. You do all sometimes get like a male point of view, but it's never the sole focus. I also do like the structure of the story because he is, Michael is telling you the story from the future. So he's in the, he's telling you a story, but then you kind of get glimpses of what's going to happen in the future. And I, it reminds me a little bit of the Lauren Oliven book, All These Broken Things, that had like a, a potential paranormal element to it. So I'm curious at the very, very end, what is going to be the element for this story? If it's going to be go, go purely supernatural or if it's going to be more psychological. Um, I like that their relationship is really interesting. I also like Marie as a character. I think that, that she's very, very interesting and engaging. They are really the heart of this story, like the, those two characters, but you do also get a lot of side characters and the setting's really cool. I've never really read a book in 1958. Um, 
And I just like the hints of vampirism that's being talked about in the story. So really I'm liking it. I'm going to read another 50 pages and then I'll give you guys another update. Also YouTube cue that now that I actually am at my house and able to watch YouTube videos again. Um, I have about 66 left. My goal is to make it through most of these videos today. That's my major goal. But I will update you guys when I get up to page 200. Bye, friends. Okay, just checking back in. It is 1.15. I did wind up bringing up to page 200 in all these bodies. I am really intrigued by this book. Like, quite intrigued. It's so unique, just the way the story is structured and, um, you know, how he's telling us the story from the future because you get a lot of, like, side stuff. You get, like, a lot of more information than necessarily the characters have in the present. I like all the side characters. I think the setting of 1958 is very interesting. Um, I also like the paranormal elements being introduced and how it affects Michael and how it affects all the other characters. There's also a lot of side stuff happening in the story that just has me super intrigued and I'm really curious to see how the story is all going to like shake out. Like, I'm just curious if it's going to go one way. Like, these books that have like a paranormal element to them like a potential paranormal element either go one of two ways they really dive into the paranormal stuff or they like link it all up to like you know science stuff and like you know mistaken mistakes and stuff like that but sometimes there's like an eve like a, a middle ground where like it's not supernatural and it's not like normal it's sort of like somewhere in the in between so it's sort of like a middle ground so i'm just curious where this book is going to go but i really am growing to like Marie as a character, I think Michael is definitely becoming my favorite, and it's just so unique that I'm just really liking it. So I'm going to read another, like, 50 pages, and then I will give you guys a quick update. But so far, really, really liking it, and so happy that I picked it up. Checking back in, I did wind up getting up to page 252 in All These Bodies. <laughs> I'm, again, super curious to see how this story is going to end. I have barely 50 pages left. But I'm really intrigued. Like... These books are always so fascinating to me because I always try to figure out if it's going to go more supernatural route or if it's going to be more of like a modern route. And this book I still don't know. Normally at this point I have a pretty good idea. But I'm really loving Michael as a main character. I'm also liking that they are diving into Marie's past a little bit and I think it's very, very interesting and very, very compelling. So yeah, I'm going to go tackle the rest of this and then I'll check in with you guys again. Um, but yeah, definitely a very, very quick read. One that, like, I didn't want to put down. And very unique. So this one also did fit for the black and white prompt on my TBR and Beyond reading board, which I'm really excited about. I didn't think I was going to have one for that one because I didn't put one in my TBR. But I'm super excited. So I'm going to go finish this. We'll give a check-in and then we'll choose my next read. Bye, friends. We're here and back. I did want to say that I did wind up finishing All These Bodies by Ken Dear Blake. Overall, I really liked it. That was a really fun, unique read. I thought the end was a little bit rushed, and I don't think I got the ending. But other than like the last like two pages, I thought the book was really, really solid. I thought it was a unique story, very, very fun. And this works for um for my TBR and Beyond Reading Challenge. Read a book um that has a black and white cover. So I really, really like this one. So, because I haven't read on my Kindle in quite a bit, I am going to choose an ebook, and hopefully it will work for one of these prompts. Um, so we'll see what I wind up choosing. I have, like, so many arcs in here that are all creepy and spooky, and I save those for the fall, and I never read them. So, the one, ah, the one I'm going to read is Lake Edge. Um, I'm going to read you guys a summary, but this is going to be a book that is a recent purchase because it recently came out. It was a recent Owl Crate book. I didn't get it, but I am going to start that. I'm really excited. Um, we heard a little bit about that one at New York City Comic Con as well. I don't think the author was there, but I think we like I heard about it. So I'm going to go pull that up, get a summary for you guys, and then we'll talk about it. Bye, friends. But according to the really brief summary I've seen, it's a lush gothic fantasy from a debut author. About monsters and magic set on the banks of a cursed lake, perfect for fans of Naomi Novak and Bridget Kimmerer. Um, yeah, I love Bridget Kimmerer. I heard Naomi Novak speak this week, and I was intrigued enough to purchase one of her books. I'm going to look it up on 
Goodreads to see how many pages it's supposed to have. Um, sometimes the arcs are like a little bit different, but let's see. I'm also in the middle of reading what the white foot stares. Um, but um, let's see. Let's just see what it says. It's about oh, 384 pages. All right, so I'm gonna give this one a start read about 50 pages and then come in and check with you guys or at least read, read a couple of chapters sometimes hard to gauge on my kindle like how many pages i have read but i did get this from one of my from mac Kelly over the summer so i'm gonna go start it and i'll update you guys when i can bye friends sorry her i just want to do another quick update i did wind up getting up to page about i think it's like chapter four yeah i got up to chapter four but it's like percent into Lake's Edge. So you basically follow these two characters. You follow Aaron, who's a young brother, and you follow his older sister. And they live in this small town. Their parents died when they were very, very young. And this woman, they called the mother, took them in. But as Aaron gets older, he starts to realize that he has powers and he is attracted to shadows. And shadows in the evening come out of him. And it is very, very scary because when the shadows take over him, he doesn't have a lot of memory of what's going on. Um, and the woman that's taken them in don't like it, and they're, he's, they're, he's, she could be very, very abusive to them. But when the monster of Lake Edge comes and decides that he wants Ad Adrian's power, they, he takes Adrian and his older sister, who's the main character of the story, with them to this haunted house. Now they're on their way back to that house, but I'm very intrigued. I always love books about shadows. The first book I remember reading was Shadow and Bone. I read that relatively recently, but that has always been a magic system that I have really liked and really enjoyed overall. Um, but I'm about 12% in. My, my Kindle battery has not had the best memory, so I might try to read a little bit more, and then I might just grab another book for the evening and to read like before I go to bed, because I do need this for work tomorrow, and my commute tomorrow will be pretty long. So... I'm going to take a little bit of a reading break, go get my hair done for tomorrow. My grandma's going to do it. Hopefully it comes out nice. Um, and then I'll check in with you guys when I read maybe to like 25%. That might be my goal for tonight. And then I might just pick up another book just to read as I charge my Kindle. So I'll talk to you guys when I read a little bit more of Lake Sedge. Very cool. I am back. I just got home from work. Um, it was a Tuesday. It was, a, you know, it's going to be a shorter week, so I can't complain all that much. Um, but yeah. So I just want to talk about a little bit of what I read. Um, I read, I listened to a couple of chapters of um, Percy Jackson and the Lightning Thief. I'm doing a read, a read along with per Prophecy Radio. So I listened to about two chapters of that book. I actually just read the graphic novel and I had no idea they were going to like start like a reread, but I'm really enjoying it. It's just such a comfort read for me and I'm really, really liking it. Um, I also read a little bit more of The Wife Upstairs by Rachel Hawkins. I am intrigued to see how this novel winds up, but honestly, I, I dislike all the characters. Like, there's not a single character in the story that I like, so that is, like, I'm making it a little, like, normally when I read thrillers, I have to really care about the characters, but the mystery in the story is sort of propelling me forward, so that's interesting. She definitely probably finish that one tomorrow, unless, like, I get distracted on the train, which is, which is possible. But, I also got up to page, or 27% in, um, Lake's Edge. It's definitely eerie, creepy, gothic. I really like the relationship between the two main characters, like, her and her brother, because it's just a very, like, heartfelt relationship. She really wants to protect her brother. Her brother has these powers that she can't control, um, and the only way to sort of protect him is to teach him alchemy, and the main character is not having that. But the the monster of Lake Edge is a very compelling character. So I'm intrigued to see where it goes. I'm going to try to read a little bit more. It's about 530. I'm going to try to read a little bit more tonight and give you guys an update. But so far I'm liking it. I've only read about 27%. My goal was 25 last night. So between today and this morning I've reached my goal. I also watched a couple of episodes of the, the new season of the Babysitter's Club last night. I'm probably going to watch that again tonight. But yeah, I'm going to go read this. And when I get up to maybe like 40%, I'll give you guys another update. Bye, friends. Sorry for the weird angle, but I'm back. It is about 
7 o'clock, I did wind up getting up to chapter 12 in Lake's Edge. It definitely is going in more of the romance direction, which I am liking. It does still focus a lot on the relationship with her brother. It is a very, like, gothic story. Like, there's a lot of stuff that's happening, and I am unsure if it's really happening or it's in the main character's head. I tend to like stories like that because at the end, you get, like, a big reveal, and, like, the big reveal is never what, like, I anticipated, so I'm really intrigued to keep reading. Um, my goal is to read at least 10 more percent um, and maybe get up to like the 50 percent mark because I am liking it. It's definitely not my favorite story that I've read recently, but I do want to keep reading. I did look to see if it was available on all my on any of my audio 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 book sites, but it's not. So that's OK. But I'm going to go back to reading, maybe grab a snack to motivate me because I'm a little bit tired, but that just happens when I work all day. I just run around the building like, like a crazy woman, so it happens. But I'm going to go back to reading, and I'll update you guys when I read about 10 more percent and when I'm at 50% in my story. Talk to you guys in a bit. Bye, friends. Here right here, I'm back. I would have getting up to page about 50% done in Lake Edge. It definitely went in a way I wasn't expecting in regards to the main character. Um, I'm liking it. I'm intrigued by it. It's a little bit more predictable than I was expecting. I thought it was going to be a more unique novel, but it is a little bit more predictable YA fantasy, um, but I am liking it. Um, I'm probably going to wrap up reading more of this book tomorrow. Um, I am liking definitely not my favorite. Honestly, I probably would have grabbed the audiobook if it was available to me, but I am. I, I do like it. Um, I don't feel connected to most of the characters. And there is a lot of characters in the story. I think my favorite is probably the the little brother. I think he's like the most fun for me to read from. And he doesn't even have a point of view. But very, very enjoyable. So I will check in with you guys tomorrow when I come home from work. But I read about 50% of the story. Which is exactly where I wanted to be. So I will update you guys tomorrow when I come home. I'm probably going to watch a little bit of Babysitter's Club. Um, and just sort of decompress. I've been trying to get better at my evening routine. Sometimes I'm really good at it. Sometimes I sort of suck at it. But I will check in with you guys tomorrow. Bye, friends. Right here. I just want to do a quick update. It is October 13th. I just got home from work. Um, I actually did have a pretty good reading day. I was able to finish The Wife Upstairs on my early, like, my during my two-school commute. I really don't know how I felt about that book. I thought it was a very fast-paced thriller, but I didn't really like, like, any of the characters like at all so it was really hard to feel like attachments to anyone because all of the characters were pretty like horrible people um and it was interesting and compelling um but it wasn't like a new favorite of mine I also read the x hex by the same author this month and I did like that one a little bit better but I enjoyed it I just really went with my thrillers I need to really like the characters and I just didn't find that in Wife Upstairs by Rachel, um, by, um, Rachel Hawkins. So, but that's okay. It was a fun read. It fit for, like, one of the prompts on the Avengers reading board. And it also gave me, um, Sharon Carter because there were 13 parts to that book. So, which was cool. Um, but yeah, I'm gonna go, I, I, I also did make some reading progress on Lake Edge. I'm liking it. It's definitely not my favorite gothic fantasy read. I just really don't feel anything for the characters, which is so sad because I like the relationship between the, the main character and her brother, but the romance I feel is very insta-lovey and it's just, I don't know, the plot is just not capturing my attention, but I only have two hours left, so I'm probably going to try to like finish that book tonight and then sort of move on to something else, so I'm going to go read a little bit more and make a little bit of progress. I'm on chapter 19. Um, I like it. I don't love it, but that's okay. Um, and then I'm probably going to pick like a physical book. So we'll touch base when I at least probably have like an hour left. Unless something like really, really big happens and I need to like tell you about it, I'll probably come back in and check, check in with you guys. But probably when I have about an hour left, we'll, t we'll touch base. Bye, friend. Here I'm back. About an hour left in this book. I'm just not liking it as much as I was hoping I would. I think it's more historical fictiony and less magic-y, less eerie and creepy 
than I was hoping it would be. And I think that's where sort of I'm at. Like, I think the characters had the potential to be fun, but it, it just wasn't captured by the plot and the writing style wasn't capturing me. I would say it's probably like a low three star read, um, more close to a 2.5 star read. I'll probably round it up on Goodreads because I did like the first half of it a little bit more than the second half. Um, so yeah, I'm going to go finish the rest of this and then I will check in with you guys, but I'm liking it. I'm not loving it, um, which I'm a little bit sad about, but so I'll talk to you guys in a little bit. Bye friends. All right, here I'm back. I did wind up finishing Lake Edge. I will be totally honest. I don't think it was the book for me. I struggled a little bit with the pacing. I didn't feel really connected to the characters either. It's probably like a 2.75 star read. I'll definitely round it up to three on Goodreads, but I really struggled with it. I'll be a little bit honest. Um, but yeah, so I am not going to read tonight. I think I have the potentiality to put myself into a little bit of a reading slump. But I did wind up picking my next read, and it actually does work for a book that has been on my TBR forever. Um, and it also works for a book that I recently got. Um, so this one will also work for the challenge I'm doing. And it's also the TBR and Beyond Reading Group and my book club book. So I'm going to pick up Anna Dressed in Bud, but Anna Dressed in Blood by Kendra Blake. Um, I've heard really good things about this, but it is another male-led story that I have not read nearly enough of them. So I'm going to bring this book to school with me. It's not that long. And it says, just your average girl meets boy, surly girl kills people story. Um, and it's about this character named Cass, and he kills people. He's like, he kills the dead. He kills ghosts. But when he goes to this town in search of a ghost that Anna's calls Anna dressed in blood, um, she is not what he has ever faced before. So I'm going to bring this book to me. I'll probably read it tomorrow on the ride. And I also might start... Um, the new Grady Hendrix book, um, The Southern's Guide to Slaying Vampires, I think. I'm going to pick that up. But I also do want to pick my next ebook that I have in here, um, which will probably be the next book that I read. So I'm going to pick it now just so I keep myself accountable. Um, um, and the book that got chosen is Forest Born. Oh, all right. So that one will, will be the next book that I read. Um, and if I make some serious progress on Anna Dressed in Blood tomorrow, I will probably bring it to work with me. But Forestborn will be the next book, so I am going to pick up Anna Dressed in Blood tomorrow, and I will also probably read, um, if, if I finish with my podcast that I'm in the middle of listening to, I'll probably restart A Southern's Guide to Slaying Vampires. So I'm excited for that one. And I didn't really love Lake's Edge. I think I forced myself to read it because it was a review book. Um, but yeah, so I will talk to you guys tomorrow for another update. Bye friends. Glory her. I'm back. It's actually the next day. I didn't wind up updating last night, um, because I was just really, really tired, but I did wind up finishing Lake Edge. I liked it. It definitely wasn't my favorite. I'll be honest. It was probably like a 2.75 star read for me. The book just did not capture me. And I think it just wasn't the eerie and creepy read I was really looking for. It was very, very romance heavy. It felt very insta lovey to me. Um, I really liked the relationship between the main character and her brother. Um, I thought the house was interesting, but the, between the the plot that I didn't really care about and the characters that just didn't capture me, as much as I liked the brother-sister relationship, it was okay. I gave it 2.75 stars. I'll probably round it up to three on Goodreads when I do review it. I liked it. I didn't love it. Um, I spent most of the day listening to podcasts. I started um, a little bit of a new paranormal book. I think I actually might restart it because I was listening to it when I was like working out and I feel like I got a little bit more distracted. But in exciting news, I did move on to Anna Dressed in Blood by Kendra Blake. I have really been liking her books. I've loved, I've read, I've liked everything I've read by her. This, this month I read um, all your, um, all the all the bodies and I really like that so this one is a, a little bit different I'm only like 38 pages in so I'll probably give you a more concise update when I'm like 50 per, 50 pages in but it follows this main character named Cass and he kills the dead he and his mom basically go around town or go around the country and they basically kill dead people well they like exterminate ghosts um, and he gets his interest is peaked on Anna dressed in blood who is a ghost that is haunting this town 
and he has to come there to try to protect this town and get rid of Anna. It's a very, very short read, and all, I don't know if you guys could see it, but all the letters are in, like, red, and I really, really like that. Um, it is really a ghost story, and I'm really liking it a lot so far. I've only read, like, 38 pages, but I'm quite fond of it, to be honest with you. Um, but yeah, I, I'm, I'm hopeful that this book will be a little bit more of a fast-paced read, so I'm going to go read a little bit and see if I can maybe hit the 100-page mark tonight. That's, like, a goal. Um, I'm also just going to watch some YouTube videos as background noise. Um, my goal is next week to like actually go back to watching TV because I've just been watching YouTube videos. But I am going to go read a little bit about Undressed in Blood. And when I get up to the 50 page mark, I will give you guys a more concise update. Bye, friends. I did wind up reading about 60 up to page 63 in Undressed in Blood. I'm liking this book quite a bit. I so rarely read books from a male point of view, like, and I just like him. I like the ghost hunting element. I like that it feels a little bit more like old timey. Like, I wouldn't say it's like her old book set in the 40s, but it just feels like a little bit older. And I like that. It feels like a haunted story. And I, I just like it. And we're also slowly getting the pieces of Anna. We haven't met Anna yet, which I think is really interesting. I will admit, going into this book, I was sort of expecting a different structure from the story. I assumed the story was going to be from Anna's point of view, and currently it's not, and I'm intrigued by that, like, right off the bat. It's a book that I really just want to read, um, but, you know, but it's really, really good. I'm really liking it. Um, I'm going to figure out my audiobook tomorrow. I started picking up one, but I might pick up another one. I don't know. But I am definitely going to finish reading this. Hopefully make some more reading progress. Um, I don't have that long of a commute in the morning. I only have like a 30-minute commute and I run out of time pretty quickly. Um, so I will update you guys when I come home. I have to do some prep work tomorrow when I get home too. Um, because I'm going to see a musical this weekend. It's like Musical Central, so a lot of musicals. Um, but yeah, so I am going to go watch some Schitt's Creek or something maybe a little bit eerie and spooky. We will see, and I'll talk to you guys later. Bye, friends. Lori here and back. It is much later. It's Friday. It's 9 o'clock. I did wind up doing a bit of filming, which I was happy with. Um, I'm also going to the city tomorrow to see Six, the musical. Today was not the best teaching day. <laughs> Fridays are always a little bit rough because the kids just want weekend, and sometimes I don't get through everything. They get frustrated. I get frustrated. Um, it wasn't a banner day of teaching, but that's okay. Um, we're st I think, honestly, it's still an adjustment for everybody. Most of the kids I am teaching have been virtual for the past two years. So that's like a really, really big learning curve for them. And I think it's hard. It's not always easy. I'm still adjusting to teaching in person because I taught mostly remote last year. I had... By the end of the year, I only had really one in-person class for the whole year. Um, and that's hard for me as a teacher to like go from like teaching everything in person and then going to remote. And even what I'm teaching now is not what I normally teach. So it's just, you know, it's also the start of the year and getting kids to perform is not always easy, especially in the times we're living in because they really haven't been around people for like two years but I did want to say that I did wind up starting the southern sky to slaying vampires um I started that I am enjoying it so far um and then I also got up to page 100 and Anna dressed in blood right off the bat I'm loving the relationship between Anna and the main character in this story I love it. I think this book is more set in like modern day, like modern day, probably when this book, when did this book originally come out? Because it seems dated, but like not dated in the way I thought it was going to be dated. So yeah, this book came out in 2011. So it's probably like around there, like when I was in college, it came out. So it does feel a little bit dated to me, but that's because I feel like it's not like a modern day story. And her writing style always reminds me of like mid -E, like you know very very old in times just the way Kendra Blake writes um it's a much darker ghost story like it's very bloody and gory um but I'm intrigued so um normally I pass out at like 10 o'clock 
I'm going to try to stay up a little bit later. That's like my goal. I would love to get up to page like 150. We will see. But I'll update you guys tomorrow before I head into the city. Um, and we'll see what this reading vlog becomes. But I really just want to tackle some creepy reads. So I'll talk to you guys when I, if I can update you guys again tonight. If not, I'll update you guys tomorrow. My friends, Lori here. I'm back. So I am here to report that I did have a fun day in the city. I definitely, whenever I go to the city, I always spend like all day there just for convenience. But it was super fun. I also just finished reading I Dressed in Blood by Kendra Blake. I really enjoyed this book like quite a bit. I thought it was a really, really fun story. I like that there was a male lead character. I like that it dealt with ghosting and haunted in a haunted house. Um, it was a super fun read. I don't think it was a book I was necessarily expecting going into it, but I really liked it. Probably give this one four stars for review. I'm probably going to try to get to Girl in Nightmares soon, maybe like by the end of the, by the end of the season or by the end of the year, but I really liked it. So I'm going to wrap up this reading vlog. Um, and this one's going to kind of continue a trend. I'm going to read a lot of old, some older paranormal series that I just never got around to. Um, but I'll talk about that in my next reading vlog. Um, also, Six was so fun. Definitely sort of like Anna Dressed in Blood. Not what I was necessarily expecting, but I really did like it. So, I'm going to go start that next reading vlog. Hopefully, I actually get some reading done this week. I have just been so distracted by other things, so it's been hard for me to focus on reading. But hopefully that changes this week, and I will talk to you guys for my next video. Bye, friends.